All right, we will call our meeting to order. We would ask the uh, Reverend Honorable Johnny Max Curry to deliver our invocation and pledge. May we all bow our heads, please. Father God in heaven, we come in this hour. Just want to thank you for able to be here tonight. We pray for you that please direct our mind, our hearts, make good decisions, and create us a clean heart and the right spirit. As we come before you, Jesus, bless us now. In the sweet name of Jesus Christ, may we all sit together. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Appreciate everyone being here tonight and adjusting some schedules to be able to be with us. So we have, uh, as item number one, is the presentation of the proposed uh, CPTSD projects, uh, 15 minutes each with quest plus question and answer. Uh, and the first on the agenda is the detention center. Thank you. All right, so the objectives uh, for a new detention center or a possible solution um, to provide the reasons why a new jail is necessary and beneficial to the county, provide information about a new jail or an, uh, an addition to the existing site, and uh, details on new jail and cost, potential locations, and how this can be accomplished. So the needs. Uh, Probably the biggest need that we have is separation cells. SCDC inspectors are the first to point out that we have a gross lack of separation cells. Reasons include charges uh, of that inmate, mental health, disabilities, disciplinary, and quarantine. We have a total of 20 cells in our current facility which are used for separation, including holding cells, isolation cells, flex, which is female maximum security cells, and maximum security cells. All the housing units, all the other housing units are a dormitory style, which uh, during a pandemic does cause issues. Current infrastructure is outdated, even with the patchwork renovations. This includes mechanical, plumbing, electrical, door controls and locks, camera system, HVAC units. Um, maintenance is at the detention center almost every, every day, adding additional cost. I saw every single one of our maintenance guys today. This is a stack of work orders since the last renovations in February 1st, 2019. It's broken up in the years, but just from 2019, this is the stack of work orders that, that we've had to send out. Um, lack of adequate holding cells for intake classification. We have three holding cells. Right now we have two on suicide watch and one female who can't go into the dorm. So that's, that's our current situation right now. Um, two of those, like I said, are on suicide watch, so those uh, mental health uh, situation there. Um, also with the holding cells, uh, bringing in for intake, classification, PREA, uh, Prison Rape Elimination Act requirements. Um, if we have anybody that meets a, like a 17-year-old that has to come in as, as charged as an adult, um, medical observation, suicide watch, and quarantine capabilities. If we don't have holding cells, they have to go into a dorm. Um, we, can't, we can't house them otherwise, and during the pandemic, you can imagine how much of a nightmare that is trying to contain COVID. Um, perimeter fencing, that's something that the detention center lacks. Uh, there, there are spots in our fence that needs, needs to be addressing. It's a very old system that uh, when it was put up, that, that metal is just, in a lot of places, it's no longer working like it should. Um, staffing, lack of applications, um, and not being competitive with pay. We are seeing that right now. We are four down. We have, uh, we'll be five down by the end of next week. Um, just they can find a, a job at another location, whether it's factory or working for government. Just we're not very competitive with our pay right now. Separation cell issues. Um, I've already talked on this. This kind of shows us um, top left. That's our holding cells. Those are all three of our holding cells. Next is flex. 
The third one from the left is um, maximum. All of them look like this, two, two bunks in each cells, except for our holding cells. And then that's isolation on the bottom. And those are all of our holding cells, or single cell unit. So this is the minimum standards on why separation cells are necessary. I can read all of those, but I, I think y'all get the point that that's a, that's a must. And those are just the documented minimum standards just based on separation cells. Um, holding cell issues. We have small holding cells for new arrivals and not many options for separations besides adding to population. Pandemic nightmare. Only three holding cells, which is limited, especially with female inmates. All holding cells have benches, which is not conducive for suicide watch, and they're all located in booking. Open dorm issues. No way to isolate inmates if there is an infectious outbreak besides moving them through areas of the detention center. Inmates stealing from other inmates, higher risk to officers that patrol an open dorm. Due to constant movement in the dorm, it is easier for issues to go unnoticed or for inmates to try to escape. Lack of separation for disciplinary issues. Out of date, outdated systems. Some systems at Newberry County Detention Center currently saw a recent renovation, some electrical, some plumbing. This renovation was mostly involved plumbing systems, new AC heat units, roof replacement, and repainting. All the systems within the jail, to include the recent, recently renovated ones, need a complete overhaul and, infrastructure, and the infrastructure is outdated. With our current door systems, there are certain doors within the facility that can be opened without key or tower, popping cell doors. The riot at Elvin S. Glen, that's how that started. A cell door was popped and an officer was taken. Um, that, that just happened a few months back. Um, while some of the AC heat units were replaced in the jail, as shown with most of, with our most previous COVID outbreak, a negative pressure AC system would drastically reduce the spread of airborne outbreaks within the facility due to current placement. And due to current placement of thermostats, it is also very difficult to maintain a constant temperature inside the dorms that is relatively comfortable. That's, that's a chief complaint that we deal with in between uh, shifts. The current camera system has issues with picture quality and sound quality on live feeds, outdated technology. When trying to review camera footage, there is an issue with echoing and makes it very difficult to hear what is being said during an incident. In the ceilings, it is very difficult to add or repair electrical systems due to overabundance of wires. Just 50 years of going back and forth trying to upgrade and piece together what we have. This is our current jail lay layout. It's called a linear style. With this style, everything is in a line which can make response times to incidents longer based on location and the number of doors you have to go through. Life safety issue for both the officer and the inmate opening dorms um, with the open dorms and long hallways. There's a lot of empty and wasted space with this layout. This style of jail makes it easier for an inmate to create an escape plan. Perspective jail layout is a radial style. Increased security by a new jail, jail layout. Increased separation cells for inmates that need to be separated. The cells are actually inside the units. Uh, if there's a disciplinary issue, those doors can be locked. Those inmates can stay inside their cell. Um, increased security in general population by changing from an open dorm layout to a double or single cells along with walls, along with central day room. Increased protection from the spread of diseases with negative pressure air system and access to cells. Increased response time to incidents with new jail layout. Increased in potential to acquire federal contracts. Increase in security with an upgraded perimeter fence fencing system. So there, there's three options that I'm presenting to you tonight in the potential location for a new jail or an addition. Option A, C, D, C and D lane on opposite side of the city from the sheriff's office, which will allow for a viable backup 911 center. Newberry Middle School is in close proximity. I think that should be a concern. Option B, Walter Cousins Drive behind the sheriff's office. Continuity of command structure, um, but also entrance to Lynch's Woods. It's, it is a widely used park in this area, myself and my kids included. Option C, option C would be a 13,000 square foot addition to current site. It helps with separation issues with cells and dorms being added, does not address all the needs of the detention center, and a very costly band-aid. 
Building costs are ever changing. At this moment, the trend is between 430 and 450 per square foot for a secure area. So this is a concept design that uh, Mosley Architects used that would be a modern approach to the new detention center. This design allows for change and growth utilizing safety. So option A on C and D lane, it kind of shows the footprint of uh, where it would be. Um, Kyle with Alliance was able to get this together for us. How option A meets the needs, separation cells and dorms capable of separating inmates for charges, mental health, disability, disciplinary and quarantine, SCDC on board with helping and approving the design. So Allendale Detention Center has a brand new detention center, but they didn't get permission from SCDC and they can't move in. It's built, it's done. So anything that we do, we, we will be in contact with uh, Blake Taylor, who's over detention centers and making sure that we have his blessing before we, we move forward on anything. Um, we don't want to be dealing with that where a design got, got through and it can get built correctly. Infrastructure with planning will be up to date and ready for the future. Holding cells meeting all requirements for the safety and security of the facility. Intake of inmates, classification, pre-requirements, medical observation, suicide watch and quarantine capabilities. Perimeter fencing, it should shine with all the galvanized steel. Staffing that this does not address this issue directly, but would boost morale with the current staff and encourage applicants to work at a newer, safer facility. Still a viable option for a backup 911 center. Option B, this one's behind the sheriff's office on Walter Cousins Drive. So every, everything is still the same because it's still a new facility. Um, having the sheriff's office next door is a huge plus. One campus working closely together and rapid response backup. Option C, this is adding a multiple dorms in a block beside the detention center. Um, separation cells and dorms capable of separating inmates for charges, mental health, disabilities, disciplinary, and quarantine. SCDC on board with helping and approving the design. Infrastructure will need to have a site survey to see what we need to support an addition. As it was renovated 50 year old building could cause some cost and feasibility issues. Mostly architects already said before they could give any type of price on working with this type of building, they, a feasibility study would have to be done. Um, this does not help out with our holding cells. Perimeter fencing needs to be worked into the plan, planning for this option. Staffing, this does not address this issue and not very inviting to work in a patched together detention center where safety has a price tag that we can't find a way to afford. Addition to the current site, adding an addition, additional housing unit, 13,000 square feet. Single and double cells in multiple dorms requires retrofitting to current site, will require updating camera system, door locks and control system to integrate with current system. Uh, additional rec yards, uh, staffing plan to ensure proper needs are being met. I've already met with the Association of Counties. Depending on how we do this, this could add more requirements from SEDC before we could even open up, depending on uh, the staffing of that. Calls for demolition of current structures and putting in infrastructure to support a new building on site. How can this be accomplished? Total cost of a new jail in a radial style seen in previous slides is around 15 to 20 million. Mosley's architect with their design, that was just a, a rough thing, came in at about $25 million. However, I think we can, we can discuss that and definitely get that in between the 15 and 20. I also had from Studio 8 a design proposal that came in today that was at $16 million. Um, front funding from CPST, ARPA funds, bonds for budgeting, possible funding from federal government with requirement to provide bed space for federal inmates. This requires extra officers and vehicles dedicated for transport. Possibility to work in the budget. Um, new detention centers that were built recently. These are just some of the counties that, that I've talked to. Charleston Juvenile Facility, it's built. It should be up and going right now. However, SEDC won't let them move in until they can hire enough officers. They're 125 down at their detention center and they're 25 down at their juvenile facility, so they can't even man it yet. Orangeburg County, um, Dorchester County, Pickens County. Um, detention, detention centers in the planning phase. We have Marion County, Edgefield County, Georgetown County, and Saluda County. Uh, Marion, 
the administrator, Jimmy Floyd, I spoke with him. They're looking at adding a 64 bed expansion to what they have. They have a very similar situation to what we have. Um, that I, I've seen what they're planning on adding. It, it does look neat, but it, he is running in the problem with it will require more officers to to do what they're wanting to do. Georgetown County, Neil Johnson is looking at a radial design and a 300 bed facility. They actually are housing more than 300 inmates in a 220 uh, maximum facility right now. And so they're building a new facility and not gonna be able to even keep it under the number. Edgefield County, um, it's early on in the planning. Uh, it's a much smaller facility. And Saluda County, it's been a roller coaster, and I don't even know where they are at this point. Um, they, and that's pretty much it. All right, we'll open the floor up for any questions for uh, about this project. If we buy this, uh, uh, build this new design, will it require more staff? So we'd have to do a study on that. Um, we went and saw Robert Benfield with Association of Counties who does a lot of the staffing analysis. So the staffing analysis for the new new design would mm -hmm. be closer to what our staffing analysis is currently. So it could require more officers, but it wouldn't be much more. Are those the only areas that you? That I focused on, yes. Okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm concerned because a lot of those areas are where a lot of people live or people visit. And I, I'm really concerned about that. I know most prisons generally are out further out where there's no, no um, housing projects or... Prisons, yes. Detention centers, uh, usually see them in, in the middle of towns. Those were the those were the lands that the county owned that we would have to buy uh, necessary property to put it on. And and each place would have to have a fence around it, correct? Yes, that that is required. Any other questions? Are this facilities are you looking into are for the future? You have the space. I count in for that. Yes. Mr. Scurry, the, the, if you built a new facility, a standalone facility, <coughs> you, you, you would have a design that would allow it to be expanded in the future if necessary. The, on, the current on site, if we do an addition there, uh, probably not have the space to expand without doing some destruction to the current facility. Still, I, I think you still could do it, but you'd have to tear down part of what we have now. Other questions? I would just encourage you, if you have not, to uh, get with Captain Floyd and go out and take a tour. In a previous life, I was intimately familiar with it, not as a resident, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, and and I, I, the, in, in my mind, the insanity of pouring money into a 50-year-old building and trying to band-aid it and hope that everything goes as plans and we know Murphy's Law never works that way. Um, just, uh, I think that's going to be, I think we need to think long and hard before we were to make a decision such as that. So if you haven't made a tour, please, please call Captain Floyd and go out and just, well, those pictures don't do justice to what that place actually looks like on the inside. And so I, I would encourage you to do that. Yeah, I'm not real fond of the patchwork plan. Uh, that, that, that doesn't normally go very well. No, no. Typically patchwork is undo and redo is a double cost. And it, and it just seems to me that inevitably you're gonna find something you didn't know that was in a wall or find something you didn't know that was in a ceiling or underground. Exactly. Or that there's just, 
and then they want change orders, and change orders cost about a time and a half again of what that, that would have cost had we known going in. So um, I'm not a big I'm not big on change orders because they cost a lot of money. Just, Anybody else? Just a comment: these two sites, other than where it's located now, actually look pretty promising, I think, because where they're at now, they have a lot of residents around them. These are actually more isolated places that we already own. So, just a comment. Captain Floyd, thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you. Uh, the amphitheater, Senator Pope, and any entourage that you have with you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to be here. Uh, I want to first say some people have called this um, an opera house project. It, it is not an opera house project. I mean, I think the opera house might use it a handful of times, 10, 20 times a year, and the other 340 days, it's a joint county city project for the benefit of this entire county. Now with me, Keith Avery is here. He's, he's on the board. And Jack Shields is the chairman and Joe McDonald. Uh, we're here to support this wonderful joint proposal that's been put together, and it speaks well for the county that the county council and the city council are going together jointly on something for the, for the betterment and the future of this entire community. The, uh, the project on the, on the slide there, everybody knows where it is by now. It's literally out the back door. Uh, and we think it has tremendous potential. And why do we need it? Quality of life, economic development. I mean, Keith Avery spends a lot of his days helping promote industry in this entire county <clears throat> and meeting the, the corporations and enticing them to come, being proactive with development. And one of the reasons they would come here, I'm not saying the amphitheater is going to bring them here by an, in and of itself, but it'll be another plus in the, in the plus column to have an amphitheater where the young and the old can use it. Now, what will it be used for? It would be used by church groups. It would be used by the, by the opera house on occasion, Saturday or Friday or whatever. It would be used for, by private groups that want to rent it. People would get married there, perhaps. It, it will have a nice stage. That would be perfect for that. Or maybe they'll just go down from work or drive in from work and eat lunch there. It's, it's just a great public facility that we can be proud of. I think it's been put together nicely. Now, in a minute, I'll talk about the cost estimate, which I think is too high, but we'll get to that. The engineers put something together that I don't think is, is, uh, is in the budget. They designed the Cadillac, and all we need is a Ford or a Chevrolet. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but I, I do believe that we saw, as you know, the Opera House has done research by visiting other towns. And I have not seen an opera, I mean, a, I have not seen an amphitheater in any town or any community that didn't have life to it, that didn't promote positive images, that didn't promote happiness among the people and unity and friendship. So it, this is a quality of life issue. It's, it's a very important thing. And the CPST is, a, is, a, is a, going to be a big shot in the arm if we can get the voters to pass it, if the, if the commission will endorse it. We believe that the amphitheater project, the joint project, will be one that the citizens will, will be drawn to. It'll be a positive when they make a vote. Well, they, we like that amphitheater. And these other projects are good too, but I think they're gonna focus on it. I think businesses will benefit. It'll, and as much as anything, young folks will benefit. The younger people, we, we, we hate to see them move away, get jobs elsewhere, leave and don't come back. Well, I'm not saying they won't, none of them will leave, but some of them will like the quality of life we provided when we got this amphitheater. And in, in the Opera House, looking at it only from the Opera House perspective, we have 400 seats. The design here we'll get to in a, in a, in a subsequent slide will show we can get 3,400 people. Therefore, the price of the ticket will go down, be more affordable. <clears throat> and when we put on the, uh, the test uh, trial run, so to speak, last June, in that site, of course, we didn't have any, uh, anything other than the site, the ground itself. People sat on the ground. It rained that day. We still had a good crowd of almost 600 people. We made some money, which was 
good, and the ticket prices were low. Everybody had a good time. And to our amazement, when the, when the show was over, there was no trash. The people took the cups or whatever and threw them away. We had nothing to do to clean up. So it was, it was a successful trial run. And we believe that on a permanent basis, it will be a beautiful, wonderful thing for this county to have an amphitheater for all the folks, the young, the old. If, if, if county council or city council want to have Martin Luther King Day there, there it is, it's ready to go. If we want to have any kind of festivals, use that. If we want to, have, if we want to put the farmer's market there, we could do that. We could do anything uh, within our imagination to make it something we are proud of. Now the next, the next slide, I don't see the clicker. Oh, there. Ah, oh, now I'm in control of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is just some examples of what we've seen. Uh, Traveler's Rest is on the <clears throat> top left. Uh, Lexington is on the bottom, both, both right and left. Uh, we, we have visited all of them, including Simpsonville, and uh, they're all wonderful uh, sites for just happiness, if nothing else. I mean, everybody has a good time. But the one in Lexington is the one closest to what we have, even though it's not exactly they're like. You see on the lower right, you see a lot of concrete. I don't think you would see that much concrete in the site right near us here now in Newberry. I would also point out, I happened to look at the, the Simpsonville website today, and they're having Willie Nelson. They've also had Darius Rucker, the Doobie Brothers, Counting Crows, ZZ Top. Now they have a big amphitheater. There's about 12,000 or 15 even. But that tells you what an amphitheater can do. It can be big acts that the young people like. Young and old, black and white, whatever they are, people will come. These are some pictures taken also of, of options. You see people on the bottom left seated in the chairs. That's somewhat like our trial run. And then to the right, you got people doing yoga. No reason in the world why people want to go down to the, to the amphitheater stage. They could do yoga or anything else. They could pray or whatever, whatever was on their mind. Now this is an overhead view of the uh, trial run we talked about last June, a part of the crowd seated down, enjoying themselves. The swinging medallions were performing. And on the right, you've got <coughs> a, a very rough rendering that, uh, that Laura Dukes did for us. She's a local a landscape architect that lives here. She drew that just on her own to help us to get an idea of what it could be and that's a, a nice rough overview of what the amphitheater would look like for the county and the city. Now this is what the engineer brought in. You can't see those numbers on the right, but I can tell you they total 4.8 million, and I don't think this project, I think that's at least a million over what we really need. We, we need a, a Ford or a Chevy, not a BMW. And I think some of the estimates can, by the, by the work of this, uh, this body talking to the engineers, I think you could shave some things to make a perfectly fine amphitheater without a lot of unnecessary frills. But <clears throat> that, that would show a capacity of 3,400, which is pretty good if you start getting a crowd of 1,200 or 2,000 or 2,500 or even 3,000, you'll have a lot of revenue, you have a lot of people, you have a lot of happiness, you get vendors there uh, selling uh, beverages and food and hot dogs or whatever they want to sell. And it would be just a wonderful for holidays, July the 4th, or whatever you can imagine. But I would say that that estimate's high. <clears throat> I, I was, we sort of thought, just thinking, that it would, shouldn't be more than about three million or three and a half million, but I think it can be shaved to that point. So we think this is a quality of life issue. It's an economic development issue, and it's going to make us all proud to have a nice amphitheater. We don't want Lexington to outdo us or Simpsonville or Traveler's Rest. They got them. 
Well, I drove to South Dakota with my grandson and my wife this last summer, and I was kind of thinking about amphitheaters. <laughs> I only found two, but they were full, <laughs> and they're nice, and the people were happy. So with that, I would say I'm very proud of this concept. I'm very proud of this council, working with city council to jointly sponsor it, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you so much. Any questions from council? I've got some questions. How will this jointly work with the city? Who will manage it and Yeah, I think the what tickets? we'll do, we'll have to have a memorandum of understanding between the county and the city. And I think the Opera House is willing because quite honestly, once if, this, if the referendum passes and we get it going, then once it's built with the funds of the CPST, then there's still gonna be some cost for the city and some cost for the county. And that's where the Opera House wants to, you know, we don't want to be freeloaders here. We think some of the revenue from these shows should, be go, should go to defer at least some of the maintenance costs of the county and of the city. Now I understand that later this week on Wednesday maybe, y'all are gonna be considering something in executive session that will amplify what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but we, we do think that the Opera House wants to be a good citizen and we do need the revenue, but we don't, we don't expect to get all of it. We expect to treat the county and the city fairly uh, in sharing that revenue towards, towards maintenance. Now, of course, there are 300 days we won't be in the, the Opera House wouldn't be in the theater, but they would manage their shows. Now, the management of any other shows can be worked out in a, a memorandum of understanding. <clears throat> so, so that's a detail that must be addressed, Ms. Arrowwood, you're right, but I think we have, a, we have a plan in place to address it pretty quickly, like in the next few weeks. What materials, if it's not going to have cement like Lexington, what, how, what the, what's the materials going to be that you sit on? Uh, well, if I heard the question right, they, they're going to have to terrace the hill a little bit, though it slopes but it needs to be terraced, mm -hmm. so it could be a matter of filling dirt, moving dirt, so you'll have some tiers. Now, you would have some concrete, but you know, it's not gonna be concrete seeding all the way across, it's gonna be grass. Just like we saw in Gainesville, Georgia. They had a tier, and then it was about eight feet before you got to the next tier, there would be families sitting there enjoying the show, and uh, so it'd be grass there. And then, of course, you need some walls along the edge, but not high walls, just low walls. So would and of course, the, one of the big items, of course, would be the stage. The, the engineer has designed a 40 foot by 60 foot stage. And that's gonna be in what is, I guess, called the floodplain. And it has to be fortified, you know, because it is in a potential floodplain. Flood and how high it'd have to be, I'm not sure, eight feet, five feet, six feet, something like that. And that will bring in some cost, but the air, but the, Stage is not heated, so it's, it's an open stage, which means it can be used any time by the citizen. And it also means that's where the performers would be, <clears throat> so everybody can see them be elevated. I knew it was in a floodplain, and that was my next question. It'll be built to withstand a flood because it has oh, yes. flooded in that area. It does. Now, I've seen water standing in there. I've never seen a lot of water, but it is no doubt in a floodplain. But this, the building has to be built to withstand whatever the 100-year flood is. So it, it won't be like that high. It would be more like six or seven, as high as necessary, whatever the engineers tell us mm -hmm. we would expect. Mm -hmm. I, did I answer all that? Yes, sir. All right, thank, thank you. I think one of the, uh, the side benefits would be that's an every community in the world that has a, a body of water running through it eventually takes advantage of that because right. it's a, it's, it adds to that quality of life you're talking about. And uh, Newberry's never taken advantage, if you will, of the Scotts Creek area. So had, except that, maybe down that end, when you get toward the end, it opens up and people... That, and then there's a park. At the park, yeah. Right. Um, friend of mine that's actually on city council recently went to some training and he shared with me that uh, the training was put on at the municipal association 
and the message was municipalities, no matter which municipality, can do good things, but if you want to do great things, you got to partner and collaborate with the county. So both of you have to work together. Um, this round of CPST is the only round that I ever remember that we had any projects that are being co-sponsored or offering to be co-sponsored by a municipality and the county. I think this is a this is something that's long overdue for the city and county to work together. And both councils should get credit for that because this is this is a milestone in my life. I don't remember ever having it. It's a great thing. It's all good. We all we all here together to try to make things a little bit better. So I think you're right. Um, I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Any other questions? I, my only hope would be, uh, I, I did a, in, my, in the previous life when I was a runner, I actually went to Traveler's Rest and we gathered at the amphitheater and we ran the Swamp, Swamp Rabbit Trail oh, Lord. back to Greenville for a half marathon. And I'd love to see eventually some parks and walking trails or something like that tied yeah, into, uh, just so that you got that ability for some, some of that. Well, it'd be a good place to it. start and end the race. R rush here, rush out of the college and run around and come back. Yeah. I can't run anymore either. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Pope. Thank you. Uh, number C is the Public Safety Complex, previously as the Friendly Fire Emergency Services Project. He bought an entourage. You bought a wrestling team. I did. <laughs> I've, I've also got the Chief of Friendly and the Chief of uh, Newberry Rescue with me tonight. Chief Works and Chief Johnson, they're going to contribute to my presentation. Well, first of all, I want to thank y'all for giving us the time to present this project. And I'm going to give you a, uh, this first slide is kind of an overview of our vision of what's going to happen out at the old fairgrounds. Um, this is just some different props we were looking at putting out there. Of course, we've already got, let me see if I can get, take the next, we just, Got the new prop for the burn building, which is back behind the back barn. Most of y'all probably, I'm sure, have been by and seen it. If you'd like to go on a tour, we'd be glad to give you a tour of it. We're very proud of this. It's a state-of-the-art training facility for us. All right, come on. There we go. Okay, our project we're presenting tonight is a combined friendly rescue and emergency management complex, public safety complex. Um, it'll be a four bay on each side, and then in the middle will be where we have a combined training area. Uh, it, this, this will provide a training room to be utilized as a backup EOC if necessary, a full kitchen that we could have the ability to support training and EOC activations. Uh, provide bunk rooms to have the ability to staff the EOC during 24-hour activations. <clears throat> that will give our uh, staff time to rest and a place to rest at. And it, it'll give us the ability to, to add full-time positions in the future for emergency services as we grow. So I kind of want to leave it on that slide for a minute. This would eliminate the first barn up front and the shed is up front. <laughs> So our long-range goal is to see the site transition to a more professional-looking location out there. It also has a CDL driving uh, prop on the back side of the building. I don't know if y'all can see that real good, but it's a concrete pad where we can do our CDL driving. So we, you know, combine several things into this project. <coughs> And that's, that's the ones I just went over. Okay, I'm gonna let Friendly give their side of the presentation. Daniel. Good evening. As many of you are aware, this is just a uh, snapshot of the front of Friendly Fire Department. Several of you came when you were uh, running for council. Several of you been there for meetings, events such as that. Uh, it is in the heart of downtown. Um, as you can see, this is where we stand today since it was established in 1962. 
We are the busiest fire station in the county pretty well every year, somewhere between 180 and 200 calls. Um, that averages about 16 to 20 a month, somewhere in that neighborhood, just for call volume. Uh, with that being said, we're kind of restricted on getting new apparatus when we get in line. The new tankers are twice the size of what we have. Uh, you'll see the restrictions that will prevent that here in a minute. Um, that's the front with the trucks we currently have. Uh, you can see the station size versus truck size. It is very tight. Uh, all the guys are driver operator certified, but at two in the morning by yourself, this gets tight, guys. Uh, you can see the clearance in the middle that you have, uh, the one on the far right with the ice maker. We have stoppers there. Uh, the maintenance department has to keep putting them down to make sure they don't back up because just like everything else, they'll wear out. It is very tight clearance. Um, running calls, trying to get equipment in and out, around, get ready. We've kind of outgrown where we are. That's just another snapshot uh, on the sides of the trucks. This is our meeting room and office. Uh, we currently have 23 members. You try to squeeze them in this area right here, as some of you have been there for meetings, it's shoulder to shoulder and people standing uh, against the wall. The office area, we have uh, a very small place to try to do fire reports, print. Uh, it's a lot involved paperwork wise that we're doing at our personal places just because this isn't convenient and uh, not much room to work with. The exterior appearance, uh, as some of the previous projects stated, the downtown appearance and things they're hoping for. This is what we look like. Some of this stuff has been uh, donated, the metal up top. Uh, members have went out and got just to try to spruce it up some. You got trucks sitting in the weather that when we get inclement weather, we have to go down and put plywood over it just to be able to respond to our citizens with call volume. Why a new uh, fire station at a new location? Uh, we'd be out of the downtown corridor for traffic purposes. When there's a lot of events, they close roads down. We're not like a paid station. Our guys have to be able to get there. Time is of the essence. So if they're trying to finagle their way around, get around with street closures, things such as that, it just slows us down. The new fire station is our public safety complex. It will not just benefit us. Uh, as Tommy said, the uh, hazmat, backup EOC, Newberry Rescue, friendly, uh, the driving course, training guys locally. It's hard for a guy to want to do it for free and then tell him he's got to travel to Greer or Clover or somewhere like that. The, the training ground out there, the more props we can do, the driving pad, it's locally appeals them a lot better than telling an 18 year old he's got to travel two hours to and from Friday, Saturday, Sunday night on his time. Um, you would also have room for them to hang out. That's what the younger crowd wants. They want somewhere they can go be there. And that infects the citizens as well because you get somebody out the door quicker. It boosts station morale, uh, which when you start talking, you enjoy it, your friends are going to join, it's a lot easier to recruit people. Uh, it looks a lot better when we have guests we want to invite to come in. Um, and with the co if COVID restrictions come back or something like that, right now we can't hardly meet with that in the room you saw. Uh, you take 23 people and try to do six feet and it just doesn't work. Station repairs where we're currently at, we're going to need to be in line soon for a new roof, probably over 25000 what some of the current roofs have cost uh, in the county that they've recently worked on. They just fixed that one for repairs. Uh, they're repairing trucks almost weekly. Uh, I was on the phone today. They're back down there working on a tanker, which there again, we just kind of have to keep working with until we can get something else that will fit. Um, and we're fixing to need major concrete renovations. This is the front pad. Um, the maintenance department is aware of this. It happened pretty quick. We got the cones there because the rebar is showing through the concrete and it's going to bust one of our tires or one of the county tires and it's going to be an expensive fix for whoever. Um, on the left side, that's the, that front apron. It's starting to get a lot of cracks, wear and tear. In closing, um, this is pretty well an urgent need for Friendly. 
the signs on the building that you saw, we we received donations for that as well, just to try to spruce it up to get some people motivated to want to join. Um, I had a meeting out at Samsung not long ago because we are out there every time you turn around, my phone's ringing hours upon hours dealing with issues. And it was kind of embarrassing when the uh, Samsung attorney looked at me, had our fire station up on a PowerPoint just like this, and he said, you mean to tell me our primary fire department's a metal barn? And that was his exact words in a meeting with him. So these industries that the county's bringing in and such, they're looking at things like that. They're doing their research. So I think a new fire station, more appearance, is going to help everybody, the, the economic development, all sides of the county. Now, where we're at now is a valuable location. What the county decides to do with it, if this project does prevail and make it on the, the ballot, that's a valuable lot. Um, just like the amphitheater they were just speaking of, 3,500 people. That could come in good use for somebody. Uh, so I think it wouldn't just be an empty space that the county would forfeit. Uh, I think it could be put to good use. Uh, at our current location, we have a lot of parking during the events downtown. We had to go down there and rope stuff off to keep them <laughs> where we can still get in and out. Because if we can't get in and out, we're no good to the citizens we serve. So it's already kind of being used for that. Um, there you see the urgent upgrades with the equipment out in the weather. It's not secured the best. Uh, we have a lot of valuable and costly items on those vehicles that you got to worry about getting stolen and everything else in today's society. Um, also where we're at currently, it is a disruption to the hotel, the local businesses around. Uh, if the outdoor theater, amphitheater goes, we're going to be right across the street, in and out. Um, and like I said, the, the street closures slow us down, getting in and out. I'm going to skip questions and let uh, Chief Johnson, and then we'll answer them all, if you all are good with that at one time. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm Chief Johnson with UBA Rescue. We have... In the beginning of this uh, endeavor, we met with Chief Works and his uh, command staff, my command staff, and we also met with Hazmat. Um, I know they've mentioned Hazmat was going to benefit, but I don't know that anybody's told you how they're going to benefit. Um, right now, Hazmat is currently spread, I think, through two or three different stations, two different stations with their equipment. Um, by us going in and joining Friendly in a station, Hazmat has been to our station, they've met, they've measured, and they feel like that by us vacating our current station, that would be a perfect house for them to move all of their equipment under one roof, um, be more centrally located um, near the interstates where, near the industries where a lot of their calls are um, versus I think they're in prosperity out in Stony Hill now trying to respond to a lot of calls throughout the county. So um, we would not be necessarily just vacating a building, but we would be rehousing hazmat in that location. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of ironic, and I think Daniel mentioned it, um, we're all looking at the same issues, um, increased response times. One of the, I guess one of the um, reputations that our department has is that our members love to go down and hang out on Friday nights, Saturday nights, during the week, um, during the last ice storm and snowstorm. I spent three nights down there sleeping on an army cot. Um, we have folks come down to sleep on recliners. They'll stay at night and run calls. If these young ladies and gentlemen are going to volunteer their time to our county, we need the bunk rooms. We need the space for them to have somewhere to stay, especially for these disasters where they're going to be, you know, possibly there for one or two, three nights. One of the best things we can do for them is get them, you know, somewhere decent to sleep, um, having the EOC there. Uh, recruitment and retention. Um, you know, we saw a significant increase when we moved from Johnstone Street to the location on Adelaide. Um, but when we moved into Adelaide Street, we had already outgrown that building before we ever done the ribbon cutting. Um, unfortunately, due to some things during that uh, endeavor, it was cut back in size to a point that we had outgrown it, and you'll see that in some pictures as well. Um, just like <laughs> Chief Wirtz mentioned, the increased training opportunities for emergency services. One of my last EMTs, in order to get 
his EMT through being a volunteer, he went to North Carolina on the weekends just to be able to take his EMT class. Um, my other two were having to drive to Greenwood. They were having to drive their own personal vehicles a lot of time to go to training for this county to turn around and volunteer. Um, we need that training room as much as we need just about anything else to have these ladies and gentlemen somewhere to train locally and receive the training that they need. Um, one of the other things is economic development. Um, this is a statement that came off of the National Association of Counties website. Um, and I won't read to you, I mean, you're welcome to look at it, but it's basically, you know, being able to respond to, you know, man-made and natural-made disasters, being able to recover from that, having those emergency services in place that um, can answer that call. Um, you know, if the amphitheater were to make it, 3,500 people downtown, somebody's going to have to respond to those medical calls. You know, our rescue squad staffs just about most all the um, special events downtown from Oktoberfest to, you know, the different events. We put an ambulance at every college home football game. We put an ambulance at every Newberry High School home football game. Um, and those are all volunteers. You know, I've got to have people to help do that. And to be an EMT takes a lot of training hours. And so, you know, in order to help encourage these folks to continue volunteering, you know, they need decent equipment. They need a decent station to go to, not, you know, um, having to step over each other. Our training and our meeting area is not much bigger than um, Chief Works' station. You can see, again, all of this equipment we had other than that ambulance, which is a borrowed truck right now, um, all of, we've had that equipment since we moved into that station. We've been overgrown since the day we moved in. Um, that Polaris was gotten off of a grant that we wrote. The boat was no cost to the county. That came from a grant that we received. Um, and so, again, it's tight quarters trying to, to back in at, at night, um, which is, you know, a lot of our calls. This is our medical supply room. We had to utilize the mechanical room to secure our medical supplies. I don't think we've got any city firefighters in here, but that is a fire code violation. Um, but at the same time, DHEC will find us if we don't have our medical supplies and stuff, our oxygen secured. Um, it's an LLR violation, an expensive violation. So, you know, we've kind of played the game with the devil and so far we're winning, but he's going to catch up eventually. Um, just some more areas, just, you know, our medical supply stuff. This is the front of our station. You can't see it from here. You'll see it in the slide in a minute. But the way this station was built with asphalt running up to the concrete pad, when these heavy trucks roll off of that concrete pad and hit that asphalt, it is divoted out that asphalt, and it's starting to break down. You can see it's dropped. It was even with that pad when it was built. It's dropped every bit of an inch and a half, two inches just in the year since it was built. Um, the con for an apparatus pad for a fire rescue station, that pad has to be concrete and it's got to run all the way to the road to allow that truck to get going. And when it drops off that pad, if there's asphalt, it's going to continue to do that any any station that you build. This is the back entry. Again, we only have two bays um, to that station. We've got three apparatus that are, you know, our ambulance and heavy rescue and a medium rescue. And then we have our boat and Polaris. In order to get the ambulance back in at night, it's a three-point turn, if not four points, to get that truck back in every time you come back from a call. Um, again, that's, that's the, you know, the heart of our presentation. You know, we love volunteering. I've been around the fire service and rescue service since I was knee high when my dad was a captain at the city. I grew up in the old fire station. That's where I went on Saturdays. Most all of the guys in our station have come up through the juniors or they've been in it for years. It's in our blood. We want to volunteer. We're not looking for paychecks, but we want a decent place and somewhere that we can be proud of to work out of as well. So, um, Chief Works, okay. Chief Alden, um, if anybody's got any questions, we'd be happy to answer. So stand them all three up in a row right there and just take any shots you want That's to it. take. Yeah. We're here for you. Any questions? So this is the biggie right here. Came in a lot higher than we was expecting. Uh, the base 
before all the con contingencies and all are figured in was $6.85 million. That's all that figured in. You're looking at $9.5 million. Um, it's a lot of money, we understand, but in order for us to move forward and, and plan for our emergency services properly, we feel like this facility is, is in dire need for our county at this point. But we, in, Welcome to construction in the COVID generation, exactly. right? <laughs> things doubling in prices. <laughs> but we'd be glad to try to answer any questions y'all want to throw at us. I, I was going to say, I, just to add on to that, I feel confident in saying that I don't think any of us has asked for anything inside that building design that wasn't absolutely needed. There's there's no BMW in that building either. Um, <laughs> it might be closer to a Pinto. Um, you know, it's, it's, what, it's what's needed by the two departments. How many different agencies will utilize that build? Well, actually, it's it's going to be the fire and rescue mainly, but in the center part of that building, we're going to have the training room where the whole county, every department in the county will benefit from that training room. And the EOC, if we need to send our people over there to use it as a to uh, a extension of the EOC, if we overfill at the EOC, we can send them over there. And we plan on streaming in the, the things on TVs in that building as well. If they're participating in the EOC, if they go over there to eat lunch or whatever, if we activate the EOC. So it's going to be utilized by every department in the county as far as training goes. You're looking okay. at 11 fire departments, or 12 count the city fire department, mm -hmm. um, hazmat, EMS, seven rescue squads. Um, Law enforcement will use it as well for training. I mean, it's open to any, any of our emergency services to use. So it would definitely be used, I can, I can guarantee you that. We're already using the uh, smaller training room we got out there quite a bit. Um, so I, I can assure you this would be utilized. So with that, you'll be able to close down the friendly over here as well as? We will not close down the rescue squad. Okay. What we're going to do is rehouse hazmat. Yeah. has no station. Okay. They're kind of adding, they're just putting stuff in bays, you know, wherever they can find room in other stations. They will actually have a house to store all of their equipment in one spot. Um, their chief and command staff have seen that station. They've done measurements, um, and they felt like that it was adequate um, facility for what they need. Okay. Other questions? This is not a question, but uh, Mr. Wirtz and Mr. Johnson, of course, Tommy, but uh, Mr. Wirtz and Mr. Johnson and all y'all staffs that volunteer uh, to take care of citizens of this county, uh, thank you so much for the hours you put in for training, the hours you put in to respond to emergencies. Uh, I, I know just one observation to move friendly from down here will keep fire trucks off of Main Street and some of these other high traffic rural avenues that will, from a safety perspective, will improve the safety because I've always been concerned about these fire trucks on Main Street because you might be in a hurry to get to a fire, but if you run over somebody, you'll have to stop. So uh, <laughs> anyway. You should. You yeah. should. <laughs> so, I see some benefits to it, and, and but, I, but mainly I just wanted to tell you guys thank you. Yes, sir. We appreciate that's, it. That's a lot. We have found that to be a very good location for responding because our district, just like Friendly's district, we cover both sides of the city. And so when you come out of our station on Adelaide, you can hit 34 bypass and go toward the interstate, or you can hit 34 bypass and go around toward Helena, Bush River community. Um, you got quick, quick access without using municipal streets. And I completely agree. That's much safer for right. everybody, and especially if we were to put an amphitheater. Can you imagine trying to roll all those fire trucks out with 3,500 people walking with around? Exactly. Right. Right. Um, well, a recipe for disaster would be what my grandmother would call that. So uh, I commend you for what you do. You know that my heart is with you. Uh, I hope this council has spoke to you in in uh, in many ways by saying we appreciate you and 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 we thank you for what you do. Uh, and I would make the same invitation I did about the jail. Uh, I haven't had the privilege of being in your building, but I've been down there two or three times now, I think it is. And the pictures don't do justice to how small and how, how tight it is down there. So uh, I, I think we ought to go and see sometimes what we're asking our people to work out of. And so we appreciate you, uh, and we thank you for what you do. Anybody else? I'd just like to tell them, too, that how much I appreciate them. 
all, all of the volunteers and, and all, because uh, they're what make it up, you know, is people loving people. So um, we thank you for all your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mawson's Way Extension. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of council. Delighted to be before you tonight to discuss two projects I consider uh, worthy of consideration and important. It's a tough act to follow, though, when I come behind <laughs> uh, volunteer firefighters who are literally saving people's lives. <laughs> but actually, I do want to uh, emphasize a point that both of my um, uh, suggested projects do include a public safety component, and so we'll get right into that. So i just run this in here. <clears throat> the Mawson's Way Extension. Uh, as some brief background, the Mawson's Way Extension came into concept approximately uh, 2019. We were approached by Samsung and notified that they had plans to triple production, which also means tripling workforce and tripling truck flows and so forth. So we began scrambling. They had already noticed some traffic snarls uh, because their truck entrance and Komatsu's truck entrance are right there together. So we began plan, uh, planning on that. We, uh, we did significant work on it back then, and then uh, the, the project was, uh, was set aside. So l let me speak a bit, uh, and, and of course the purpose of this is to improve traffic flows and public safety in, in Newberry County Industrial Park, which is of course the industrial park at the intersection I-26 and Main Street. So let's talk about why it's needed. Uh, both of my projects are essentially pro uh, uh, problems of success. We've grown quite a bit in both of these areas, and we need to keep up with that growth. We've seen an increase in population in the Newberry County Industrial Park. We've basically tripled it. We've gone from about 700 employees to over 2,000 today. Uh, which means uh, triple the number of cars and probably more than triple the number of trucks. <clears throat> Um, we have seen a significant uh, traffic increase in truck movements, and th this would uh, offer uh, better safety in, in terms of ingress, egress uh, for everybody in the park, especially with respect to Komatsu employees, because they have to leave that their uh, facility and turn left if they're going back towards town. Uh, facing into a hill. So they've had tremendous concerns about that in the past. We've addressed these concerns to DOT with uh, a, a basically no success uh, uh, there. Uh, the second entrance could also be used as a truck entrance, which would means we could perhaps segregate most of the truck traffic from the passenger vehicle traffic. Again, uh, you know, if, if big trucks and little cars don't combine, then that's a safer type of situation. And of course, this would also open up at least three new sites to economic development, sites that are not accessible today. And we'll show a map here in, in, in just a minute. But let's talk about, uh, I did a survey of the industries down there in that park and I talked to them and I, I tried to, you know, I did head counts and, and how many trucks you have per day. But if, if you count uh, one truck coming in, uh, unloading its goods and then leaving, Count that as basically two vehicular movements. Same with a pass, uh, uh, an employee who works at Samsung. He comes in in the morning, he works, and then he leaves. That's two vehicular movements. As you can see, uh, we've got significant traffic in that park. There's over 2,000 people. We have about uh, an estimate of 4,300 uh, vehicle passenger vehicle movements per day, and somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 truck movements per day. This is the conceptual rendering. As you, you probably all know, this Mawson's Way is currently an L-shaped road. It goes straight back, it curves in front of Samsung, and it ends behind Komatsu. There's a little cul-de-sac back there. What this plan would do is essentially make this a U-shaped road. It would create a second entrance that we could hopefully get a traffic signal at, which of course would uh, make it everything safer for people uh, leaving that park uh, each day. Uh, 
it's not in my presentation, but we've, we've had preliminary discussions about right-of-way acquisition and, and all of that stuff. So we have done significant work on this, this project. Now, what would it cost? Well, it, unfortunately, it's not a very cheap thing to do. We're talking about uh, a couple thousand linear feet of new roadway. Um, and so the price tag is about $2.8 million uh, as, of, as of today. So I'd be glad to answer any questions you folks may have about the, the concept of the Mawson's Way extension. Any questions from council on that project? Just, uh, just a quick uh, question, Rick. Uh, you talked about right-of-way acquisitions. Yes, uh, sir. Are we going to have to actually purchase property from some of these industries that we're serving? We don't we believe so. That we've had preliminary discussions with all of these industries. Now, we've never put anything on paper. Uh, it, originally, Komatsu did not like this idea. Now they do like this idea. They see an advantage to them in offering additional safety to their employees. We do not anticipate having to pay for right-of-way acquisition, and it is not in this estimate. And then the second is kind of to follow along that same line. Um, could we get some sponsorship from those industries that we're actually doing this to serve? That's an interesting question. It's not one that we've considered. Um, I suppose we can always ask. Well, I mean, we, we are improving their access for their vehicles. If it were uh, totally personally, uh, privately owned property, they would have to maintain their own road to their, their property. So I think that definitely should be something we we should approach. Yes, sir. Any other questions? I, I noticed it's two estimates. Now, is, is the 2.8 million everything together, or is this 1.6 million for improvements only? Well, the 1.6 million is for the resurfacing of Mawson's Way, which is a separate project, and it's not necessarily included in this effort, is it? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand that. But yes, uh, we did a, a study in 2017 of the condition of the existing Mawson's Way, uh, and the estimates were about $1.6 million to resurface that road, but it's actually far more than resurfacing. There are portions of that road that will literally need to be dig up and built back up from the base surface. Uh, so, if you combine these projects together, yes, you're looking at a, a total cost of that. And you obviously have a copy of that $1.6 yes. million. Dollar. Uh, uh, but that would, be, that would be repairing an existing road. Okay. So that, that part of it would take us to the cul-de-sac. And then the, the yes, remaining sir. part would take us the rest yes, of the way sir. back out to 219. Yes, sir. So to do the project, just so I'm clear, I don't mean to reiterate, but I'm kind of clearing it in my head now because now I've gotten confused, <clears throat> is to go all the way around would be the 2.8 plus, plus the 1.6. which is what, 5.4 million. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the one that we Right. And these, I'm sorry. And then that's why um, whenever Rick presented it to us, he just presented the extension. Gotcha. Um, because that had never been brought forth for that. Gotcha. But I would but, like. But to the pavement, the, the paving you've talked about us before. I don't think yes, I sir. had in my head that it was going to be four and a half million to do them both. Yes, so. sir. Uh, well, yes, sir. The. Uh, the resurfacing of Mawson's Way goes naturally with the extension, of Mawson's Way extension. No question about the it. The concept would be we'd build the new road first, divert all traffic, and then fix the existing road. Gotcha. It can be done in a more disjointed manner, but it gets more problematic and more disruptive. Okay. Any other questions? All right. 
Number next. The water tank. Uh, I originally called this water tank for Mid-Carolina Commerce part, but I, I, I've changed my tune a bit on that because this is, this is a project that would actually benefit the entire area for miles around. Uh, the, the exit 82, which of course is the exit I-26 and South Carolina 773. Uh, the purpose of this one is, to, is, is all about fire suppression. Uh, and we'll get into that just a little bit. It's about improving water flows for fire suppression. Why it's needed. Uh, we, <laughs> we've been successful. Since 2016, we have five new facilities in this area, MM Technics, SWM, KRA, Life Science Logistics, and Day Young, which is currently under construction. <coughs> Combined, these projects represent about 750,000 square feet of manufacturing and office space. There's going to be about 600 employees and there's $120 million in capital investment in this area. When you add to that the Rolling Hill subdivision, which is just three quarters of a mile from this intersection where this is roughly 90 new homes. So we've got uh, both uh, residential growth and industrial growth in this area. This is also, adding this water tank is also a next step in improving water flows in, in, in this area. The first step was from the 2010, uh, 2016 capital project sales tax, and that's where we funded uh, expanding the pipe size from 8 inches along SE 773 to 12 inch water pipes. So we now do have 12 inch water pipes in that area. So the, the, uh, the water tank uh, would, is a natural extension of, of that effort. And, uh, Relatively minor uh, but important issue is that uh, it'll, it'll ease a competitive disadvantage that we have currently in landing new industry uh, to that area, and I'll explain that here. This is called a uh, fire protection storage tank. It's just outside of uh, SWM. That's our former spec building there that's deep inside Mid-Carolina Commerce Park. When SWM originally agreed to move out into this facility, and you know we had to buy them out and move them to make way for Samsung, they didn't know that they needed this system. We didn't know that they needed this system. But in discussions with the fire marshal and other authorities, since they work with paper, which is a flammable material, uh, they, uh, the, it was determined that we did not have enough uh, pressure and volumes in, in the water system to combat a fire at that facility for up to two hours. So uh, the addition of this water tank would uh, eliminate the need for any other industries to build a tank like that. That's an individual expense. It cost SWM about $800,000 at the time, which increased the project cost because their entire move was about $4 million in terms of their cost. So this added $800,000 uh, to that need. And, uh, and it will put us at a competitive disadvantage. If a company knows, if I go to Newberry in Mid-Carolina Commerce Park and I gotta build this million dollar water tank, but I can go to this park over here in Lexington County or wherever, then that puts us at a competitive disadvantage. So this would eliminate the, the needs for, for these uh, type of uh, ex expensive accessories. This is another reason why it's needed. The closest water tank to this exit now is currently about five and a half miles. That's at the intersection of Mount Pilgrim Church Road and SC uh, 391, just south of, uh, of Prosperity. The Egoid is also hooked to this, but that's a whopping eight miles away. So there are no water tanks in this proximity. So, uh, uh, and this is, this is our growth corridor south of Newberry along I-26. That's where we plan to see the most growth in, in the coming years. Now, where would it go? This is not set in stone, but we've ta I've talked with uh, the engineers and with uh, uh, Brent Richardson at Newberry County Water Sewer Authority. We've identified three possible locations. Uh, now, the one thing, the one uh, big limitation here is it has to go on high ground, which makes perfect sense. Um, the right there on the corner is, is a great location for it. it uh, it's, uh, it's right around the high uh, mark. It's also great visibility. But we've identified two other uh, areas, all owned by Newberry County, where this site could, could go. There was another uh, suggestion, perhaps, which is down near the intersection, the end of SC 773 and US 76. 
that area is also high. But, you know, part of the reason for this is to serve the area around the interstate. So putting it a couple miles away kind of defeats that purpose. Now, what would it cost? It's a very expensive item. Uh, I, was, I had a bit of a sticker shock when I saw these prices, too. But I can't recall a cost estimate I've seen lately where I did not have sticker shock. Um, 3.2 million of this, of course, would be in the water tank itself. Uh, so these are these are very big ticket items, and, and of course my concern is if, if we don't pay for it through these means, then how do we pay for this? Because eventually, this will not just be wanted, but truly truly needed. Uh, a new water tank for this area was actually part of the original Mid Carolina Commerce Park uh, uh, master plan, which was uh, authored in, in 2006. So this concept has been around for about 16 years. Okay. And I'd be glad to entertain any questions you might have on, on the new water tank. Any questions from any council on the water tank? All right. Hearing none, Rick, I'd just like to say I, I shared with the uh, county administrator, I, I had the opportunity to be in two different meetings with you last week. But, yes, uh, sir. Workforce development and um, on the uh, uh, county, uh, the name just left me, but it's okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, thank just you for to, attending those meetings. We just appreciate appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the reputation you have with other institutions and how you represent Newberry County and uh, certainly workforce development's been a passion of mine and so it was nice to hear Piedmont Tech you know, working toward that and yes and your commitment toward that as well so just uh, commendation to you for both of those meetings and how you handled yourself thank you all all right any public comments where's Miss David no no public comments no one signed up anybody want to make co public comments that hadn't signed up I don't want you to take it home with you. Just make you mad till you can get back. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, any comments from the county administrator? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just two quick comments. One is um, the notebooks that you have. Um, you know next Tuesday we're going to do this again with six presentations. Um, notebooks here, we'll add to it. There are some scoring sheets in there. You may want to take those home with you while it's fresh, or you may want to keep them in your notebook. But um, uh, if, if you'd like to leave them, if not, if you want to bring them back sometime before next Tuesday, we'll add to that notebook. Um, and the, my only other comment is happy Valentine's Day. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, count, comments from uh, county council members. I don't remember where we are, so we'll go to Reverend Scurry first. Mr. Reader? Uh, I'd just like to say I think we're off to a good start. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's gonna really, it's gonna take a lot of uh, maneuvering and decision making and everything else. So we down for the task. There you go, <laughs> Mr. Sheely. Uh, thank you for all your hard work putting putting all this together. Uh, we definitely see where we got some needs, uh, not just wants, but Newberry County has some definite needs that we need to look into, and. Uh, we're going to do what we can to help all of you out the best we can. Ms. Aaronwood? Yeah, we've got tough decisions to make, and um, kind of reflection of what Nick just said, these are a lot of needs, not necessarily wants, because they're not pretty, you know, some of the things are not pretty uh, to look at other than maybe the amphitheater, but uh, very much needed, so. We do have some tough decisions to look at. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, we, if we approve these projects tonight, we will have approved $40 million. I don't know what we're going to do with all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so, you did right. the math for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> My, my logic was going to be if we just went with tonight, we've overspent. So I didn't know it was that badly overspent. So uh, I think sticker shock is probably an understatement, Rick, as to what I have been in, and I'm just amazed. So be some tough decisions, and uh, but we got to do what's best. That's why uh, the our constituents had enough confidence in us to put us here, and we had enough confidence to place this board that that will be here in these as well. So we'll. We'll, we'll have to make some tough decisions for sure. Anyone else? Is your motion to adjourn? 
Motion by Mr. Hip, second by Mr. Sheely. All in favor by show of hands. It is unanimous. You stand dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>